Love it, love it, love it. All right, very good. We'll have a lot of opportunity to use them. All right, well, I'm Tracy Gray, and I have the pleasure of serving as the chair of the Math Counts Board of Directors and as Vice President of External Affairs and Communications for Raytheon Intelligence and Space. And it is my honor to welcome you to the 2023 Raytheon Technologies Math Counts National Competition. I am here from Arlington, Virginia. Where is Team Virginia? Yeah. As, as, as. And a, as we learned yesterday, Virginia is for math lovers, right? <laughs> All right, for, for four decades, Math Council has brought students together to make learning math fun. We design our programs and resources to help build problem-solving skills and instill positive attitudes that foster a lifelong love of math. Thousands of students throughout the U.S. participate in our programs and use our resources each year. The great academic success they go on to achieve, as well as in their careers, is a testament to the power of this approach. And since we held the first Math Counts National Competition in Washington, D.C. back in 1984, we have celebrated the nation's brightest young minds through the only in-person math competition of its kind. Today, we're celebrating your journey along this pathway, a journey marked by problem-solving skills, creativity, and perseverance. You inspire us and you make us proud. Before we get deeper into the program, I'm going to go off, off script for just a moment and give a special shout out to the folks that are right down here, the, the Math Count staff, as well as the folks that are working this event to put it on. Let's give a big thunder stick round of applause for them. These folks give so much of their time, uh, including giving up the Mother's Day weekend, and speaking of which, just a, a happy belated Mother's Day to all the mothers in the room, as well as the mothers in your lives. So we are fortunate to have some special guests with, that will help lead today's program. They are Dr. Bindu Nair, the Director of Basic Research within the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, Kevin Dykema, President of the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, and coming to the stage now, Britt Smith, the President of the National Society of Professional Engineers. Please join me in welcoming Britt to stage. Yeah, you guys are awesome. All right, we heard about Virginia. Where's my team from Missouri? Come on. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, Tracy. It is my great pleasure and honor to be here representing the National Society of Professional Engineers, one of the founding sponsors of Math Counts. What began in 1983 has grown to reach tens of thousands of students each year in all 50 states and the District of Columbia, plus the U.S. territories and overseas schools affiliated with the U.S. Department of Defense and the State Department. What began in 1983 as one program has also grown into three programs. In addition to the competition series, Math Counts offers the Math Video Challenge and the National Math Club. Later this afternoon, we will celebrate the finalist of the Math Video Challenge. And now, I would like to, to welcome Dr. Stephanie Fitzsimmons of Northrop Grumman to the stage to help us recognize this year's National Math Club Gold Level winners. Northrop Grumman.
Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman is the lead sponsor of the National Math Club, and their sponsorship enables middle school groups in the country to participate at no charge. That's worth a round of applause right there. This year's this year's National Math Club Gold Level winners are from Norman S. Ware School in New Jersey. This club achieved gold level status by completing a data exploration club project and was selected from a group of 152 gold level clubs. We're excited the club is represented today by four members of its club and their leader, with Jacob Kapper, Trayon Johnson, Emily, I'm sorry, Emily Pagliano and Marianne Avaya and their club leader, Angela Larkin, please come to the stage to be presented your gold level banner. Congratulations, Ware School Math Club. And thank you so much, Stephanie, and thank you, Northrop Grumman. Now, we'll shift our focus back to the competition series and the mathletes who have been competing this weekend. I know the path to nationals is a long one, including many months and or even years of preparation and sustained success at the school, local, and state level. Many people working behind the scenes or alongside you have supported you on this journey. And we'd like to take just a moment to recognize them for their contribution, making today's celebration possible. I'm especially excited. I'm especially excited to represent the thousands of licensed professional engineers who volunteer each year to coordinate and support in-person chapter and team competitions. Their commitment and expertise and enthusiasm are remarkable. And I know that they have inspired many, many future engineers. To those of you in the audience who are members of the National Society of Professional Engineers, thank you for your dedication Thank you for your dedication to these future engineers and for everything you do to promote and enhance our noble profession. Will all the members of the National Society of Professional Engineers please stand so we can recognize you. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'll let you in on a little secret. I just made those engineers feel just a bit uncomfortable. 
You see, generally engineers don't seek the spotlight. When we do our best work, people don't notice. We all expect the lights to come on when we flip that switch, clean water to come out of the faucet, and the air we breathe outside to be clean, and the thousands of other things that happen every day to make our lives a little easier, a little better, and a little safer. The best way to define what engineers really do is solve problems for society and make life better for all. That's one of the reasons I am so excited to be here with you and all you great mathletes. What you all do well isn't just math, although it is a big part. What you do is solve problems. You look at the facts, you set some parameters, then you find a solution. What, that's why you would make great engineers, and we're hiring. <laughs> I'm going to make a bit of a prediction, and I don't think it's too much of a stretch. Somewhere in this room, there is a future engineer who's going to solve the issues associated with climate change. There's another who will find ways to feed the hungry from around the world. There's another who will find ways to move people from place to place faster and safer than any of us could imagine right now. And there's another who will be working to send the first people to Mars. And who knows, they may, be, may even be a member of the crew. You see, all these issues, all these situations, they're just another problem to solve. You all are already developing the skills needed, and we need you to help us. That's why we at NSPE are so proud to be a part of this great event each year. In addition to providing volunteer support and being a math count sponsor for math count, excuse me, being a founding sponsor for math count, NSPE is pr proud to continue its national sponsorship alongside other generous companies and foundations that share our passion for MathCount's mission. Please join me now in thanking the major sponsors that make MathCount's possible. <laughs> Title sponsor. Title sponsor, Raytheon Technologies. Title sponsor, U.S. Department of Defense, STEM. Lead sponsor, BAE Systems. Lead sponsor, Northrop Grumman Foundation. And national sponsors, the National Society of Professional Engineers, 3M, Texas Instruments, an art of problem solving. Math Counts. Math Counts is, is fortunate to receive funding from many other corporations, foundations, alumni, volunteers, and families of, of mathletes from around the country. We are so appreciative of the support of these companies and individuals, and we'd like representatives of all our sponsoring organizations of Math Counts to please stand and be recognized. From volunteers to educators to program funders, Math Counts is a huge team effort. And speaking of teams, do you think it's time we recognize some of the great teamwork demonstrated by our mathletes during the written competition? All right, let's get started. The first awards of the morning will go from the top 10 teams based on yesterday's performance, and I will announce teams 10 through 4. 
coaches, and students, if I call your state, please stand to be recognized. Are you ready? All right, here we go. In 10th place, California. Okay, in ninth place, in ninth place, Nevada. And in eighth place, Illinois. In seventh place, Washington. In sixth place, Maryland. In fifth place, North Carolina. And in fourth place, Georgia. Congratulations to all these teams. And now I would like to uh, ask Tracy Gray and Bindu Nair to please join me on the stage to present the trophies to the top two, excuse me, top three teams. The mathletes and coach of each winning team should come to the stage to receive their award. You ready? Have I built enough excitement yet? Come on. All right. In third place. In third place, the team coming from the state of Massachusetts. <laughs> team members, Nikhil Barumpa, Christopher Chen, Adam G, and Selena G, and their coach, Josh Frost. Everybody look at him. The second place team comes from the state of Florida. Team members, Eric Gao, Roger He, Ben Jang, Ashvin Sinhao, and their coach, Pushpa Kurian.
Okay. Only one to go. Here we are. And the team in first place. The winners of each team of the team competition each will receive a $2,000 college scholarship. All right. And that team is from the great state of Texas. <laughs> team members, Kevin Chen, Alex Sun, Channing Young, Roger Zen, and the coach, Andrea Smith. Congratulations to the Texas team for that outstanding achievement. One more round of applause. All right. Taking us through the next portion of the event, please welcome Kevin Dykema, president of MathCount's founding sponsor, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Thank you, Britt, and congratulations to our top teams. I am honored to represent the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics at this incredible event, and to do so in front of not only so many accomplished student mathematicians, but also so many dedicated, inspiring, and accomplished math educators. I want you to know that today, yes, here, is one of the highlights of my first seven months on the job as president. Could you say, I'm a middle school math teacher in Southwest Michigan. Where's my team, Michigan? You are my people. I get you. I know you. And I celebrate you. These few days at Math Count showcase incredible thinkers and problem solvers and incredible people. I absolutely love this. I want to take a moment to recognize another group that are my people. The wonderful mathematics teachers, coaches, advisors here with you. I thank them for sharing their time, their passion, and their expertise with these students and all the students we encounter in middle school. I know middle school students are special. They come in all different flavors and varieties. But what I also know is that teachers and the work they do to listen to students, believe in students, and support students, and through their hard times, their quirkiness, their craziness, it has a lasting impact on students. I also want to give a huge shout out to the parents and caregivers and all they do and have done to support you. It's a lifetime of work, and I know they are so proud of you. Being here for me is a crystal ball moment. It gives me a glimpse of our future through seeing you. Because I know that you 
are the leaders of tomorrow. And I know those sitting in this room do a lot of great things and will do a lot of great things. My hope is that some of you will become the mathematicians and math education leaders of schools, districts, universities, states, and even our nation in the coming years. We need more thinkers and problem solvers like you. You are going places, and I hope to be here when you do. So 10, 15, or 20 years from now, if by chance we bump into each other at a meeting, or perhaps at an NCTM conference, please come up and remind me of our time here together. I'll probably have less hair or more gray hair, and you'll be all grown up, but I'll guarantee I'll remember this day. And so I say you are our rock stars, our middle school math rock stars. Enjoy it, embrace it, drink it in. I can't wait to see all you do and just maybe look forward to working with some of you as the math education leaders of our future. Thank you. <laughs> math is especially powerful when it is relevant to student lives and pushes them out of their comfort zone. Fortunately, Math Counts has incredible math experts who volunteer their time to write creative and complex problems and provide a fun and fulfilling challenge, the kind of productive struggle that makes success all the more meaningful. The unique math problems are a huge part of what makes Math Counts special. And I'm proud that many of the question writers, reviewers, and judges are associated with NCTM. A couple of these volunteers are here this morning. Please stand so we can recognize and thank you. We are ready to announce the 12 truly outstanding problem solvers who excelled on yesterday's written competition and have qualified for a spot in this morning's countdown round. Competitors, if your name is called, please leave your calculators, hats, name badges, and any other personal items with your team members and come up to the stage area with your coach. You will be provided with pencils and scratch paper at the contestants' table. Okay, here we go. I will first announce countdown round competitors 12 through 5. The number 12 seed is Edward Chen from Indiana. Number 11. Number 11 is Jason Lee from North Carolina. Number 10 is Selena G from Massachusetts. Number nine is Alex Sun from Texas. Number eight is Varun Gaudi from Georgia. Number seven is Adam G. from Massachusetts. Number six is Siebert Mao from California.
And the number five seed is Roger Zen from Texas. Our next two competitors, number four and number three, will each receive a bye in the first round of the countdown round. The number four seed is Liam Reddy from Nevada. And the number three seed in the countdown round is Channing Young from Texas. For our top two finishers, I will ask that they and their coaches join me on stage to receive awards. Each of these students will also receive a bye in the first round of the countdown round. Congratulations to this year's written competition runner-up, Ashvin Sinha from Florida, and his coach, Pushpa Kurian. And if those two will come to the stage so they can get their award and a picture, that would be fantastic. And this year's written competition champion, who receives a bye in the countdown round and is the recipient of a $2,500 college scholarship, is Oren Wang from New Jersey. Please welcome Oren and his coach, Mary Beth Gakis, to the stage. Congratulations to all the Countdown Round competitors. All right, one of these 12 mathletes will become the 2023 national champion and the recipient of the $20,000 Donald G. Weinert's College Scholarship. They're receiving their final instructions now, and I've been asked to prolong the anticipation for just a few minutes before we get started here. This weekend, we have been celebrating Hollywood style. Math can take you nearly anywhere, including a walk down the red carpet, to the Grammy stage, and the TV and movie screens. If you saw last summer's blockbuster movie, Top Gun Maverick, you saw thrilling FA-18 jets soar through the big screen carrying radars, sensors, and advanced avionics. That technology was created by talented Raytheon engineers using a multitude of mathematics calculations. 
it's not just our products that shine bright in the spotlight, but our people too, who use math in work and home. Let me give you an example. During the day, we have an engineer named Justin Wilson who puts on the lab coat and tests semiconductor components used in advanced space systems. But in the evening, he sits down in his home studio to arrange and create music, using his engineering skills to rework classic songs in his own style. And in 2019, Justin won a Grammy Award for writing a new arrangement of the Spider-Man cartoon theme. We need shining stars like you to be the next generation of engineers, scientists, and thinkers who also focus on their personal passion for math to make the world a better place. And now I'd like to introduce you to the countdown round moderator, Julie Montoya, who is back by popular demand. Julie is our lead analyst on the VIRS program at Raytheon Intelligence in Space. As a matter of fact, you may have seen Julie featured on an Emmy Award winning TV show, Innovation Nation. In that segment, Julie explained to a TV audience how Raytheon's VIRS weather sensor flies aboard a NASA satellite, gathering environmental data as it orbits the Earth. She earned a bachelor's and master's degree in control systems from Washington University in St. Louis. And I think I heard from our Missouri team already. Where are they? Oh, they're, they're getting quiet now. <laughs> you got some help, Missouri. <laughs> Julie, Julie picked that major because she was told it was the hardest and coolest math. During college, she worked as a summer intern at NASA, twice. She was drawn to the high stakes nature of space engineering because of the importance of getting things right on the first try. Julie lives in Hawthorne, California. California, I know you're, you're out there. She lives out, out there with her husband, two children, and we must not forget the two dogs. Like you, she has also competed in math competitions and was captain of her middle school and high school math teams. And now she's eager to meet this year's mathletes. So please, join me. Let's get the thunder sticks going for Julie Montoya. Thank you, Tracy. I'm so thrilled to be back here with you guys in Orlando this year. Now, as you all know, our competition takes place just a stone's throw from one of the most magical places on Earth. I speak, of course, of the Kennedy Space Center over in Cocoa Beach. <laughs> if you haven't made it over there yet, I encourage you all to go visit this monument to the power of math. We sent men, and hopefully soon women, to the moon over there using all of the mathematical tools that you guys are learning right now. That delta V calculation to figure out how much thrust is needed to exit Earth's atmosphere, that's just a differential equation. The go, no-go decisions that all the launch control engineers have to make on the fly, that's just probability and statistics in action. And the deterministic flight trajectories during liftoff and on orbit, that's just calculus. And it all starts with you guys here in this room. Now, if I could humbly compare myself to those engineering titans of the Apollo program, I spent last month at Raytheon analyzing performance trend plots to help NASA decide what temperature to run one of our space sensors on. And then I extrapolated those trend plots to help figure out how long of a life we could expect on orbit. In my other job at Raytheon, I'm helping to develop and test out the mathematical algorithms that space sensors will use to find and track ballistic missiles to help keep our world safer. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, you guys will have a lot of options for careers one day if you decide to stick with math. And I hope you're excited about it because some of them are out of this world. Okay, at this time, 
I'd like to welcome back to the stage our 12 countdown round participants. Let's have a round of applause for all of them as we get a group photo. All right, remember to smile this time, guys. Big smiles. All right, now let's get right to it. The countdown round competition is a single elimination bracket tournament where the top four seeds will have a bye in the first round. I will read a question while it is being projected on the monitor in front of the students and also on the large screen for the audience. Should I misspeak when reading a problem, the problem showing on the student's monitors and the audience screen will be considered the official problem. Students will have 45 seconds to solve the problem after it appears on the monitor. There will be a green 45 second timer bar at the top of the screen. The timer bar will change to yellow when there are 10 seconds remaining on the clock. Competitors, once you have solved the problem, press your buzzer. I will call on the first person who presses the buzzer to announce his or her answer. Do not announce your answer until I've called on you. I know you're gonna be excited, but you have to wait. If you answer without buzzing in, your answer will not be recognized until you buzz in. Once I call on you, you will have three seconds to complete your answer. Your opponent may continue working while you are answering the question. If you answer incorrectly, your opponent will have the remainder of the 45 seconds to buzz in and answer the question. Whoever answers the most out of five questions correctly not necessarily three out of five, will win the round and progress to the next round. Should the score be tied after five questions, we will begin the sudden victory procedure, meaning the next student to answer a question correctly in the matchup will win the matchup. Good luck to each of you, and now let's get on with the first matchup. The first pair of students to compete will be our eighth and ninth placed finalists, as announced earlier. Varun Gotti and Alex Sun, please make your way to the competitors table. All right, now we're gonna give our competitors an opportunity to get used to their microphones by introducing themselves. So Varun, welcome back. Please tell everyone your school and what grade you're in. I'm in eighth grade and I go to Fulton Times Academy. All right, now Varun, you told us that one unique fact about yourself is that you are a fast learner. Can you give us an example of something you've picked up exceptionally fast? Yeah, I was able to find the formula for all terminal Pythagorean triples. Holy moly, well that bodes well for today. <laughs> all right, why don't you go ahead and test your buzzer for me? See, you picked that up pretty fast, too. <laughs> All right, Alex, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. Uh, hi, I'm Alex. I go to Satarsha Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. All right, very nice. Now, we asked, if your life was a movie, what would it be called? You said that your movie would be a documentary of the life of a cashew enthusiast. <laughs> Not of a cashew. As a cashew enthusiast, what would you say you love most about cashews? Um, cashews are just simply exquisite. The flavor, the texture. That was a, a great round of applause for cashews. 
All right. <laughs> Alex, why don't you go ahead and try your buzzer for me? Excellent. All right. Are you guys all ready to go? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then let's go ahead and get started. And the next question is, for how many, Alex? 19. I'm sorry, repeat that? 19. That is the incorrect answer. For how many different positive integers n is the absolute value of the square root of n minus the absolute value, the square root of 100, less than 1? Varun. 39. That is the correct answer. And it is 1, 0, Varun. And the next question is, it takes Max 24 minutes to pass out 12 flyers for the school play. To pass out the same number of flyers, it takes Tyler 12 minutes, and it takes Chloe 8 minutes. Working together, Alex? Two. That is the correct answer. We're all tied up. And the next question is, the 26 letters of the alphabet are written in random order in a line. What is the probability that you and I are adjacent? Alex. 2 over 13. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Express your answer as a common fraction. Varun. 1 over 13. That is the correct answer, and it is 2 to 1. All right, and the next question is, if 33 is a divisor of the integer 4,727,000, 546,001A, what digit does A represent? Varun. Zero. That is the correct answer. And the round winner is Varun Gotti. Congratulations. Thank you, Alex. You can head back to your seat. All right, at this time, I'd like to welcome our round two competitors. At this time, I'd like to welcome our round two competitors, Roger Zen and Edward Chen. Please come to the competitor stadium. Welcome. Roger, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Tell us what grade you're in and sure. where you go to school. I'm in seventh grade. I go to Westbrook Intermediate School in Houston, Texas. Friends All right. Texas. Houston. 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 It says Houston. <laughs> okay, now, uh, we asked all of our competitors which character is most like them, and you picked Bob from the Minions. Uh, you said it's because you speak gibberish a lot. Could you do your best Bob impression for us? Banana. <laughs> All right, that was great. My kids also love Bob from the Minions. You want to go ahead and test your buzzer out? Awesome. All right, Edward, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us what grade you're in and where you go to school. My name is Edward Chen, and I'm an eighth grader at Carmel Middle School. All right. Now, you told us that you've been exploring mathematics as long as you can remember. Do you have a specific memory about exploring math from when you were really young? Um, I remember doing a multiplication table when I was in kindergarten. Holy moly. Wow, well, never too early to start. That's great. All right, go ahead and give your buzzer a try for me. 
Excellent. Now, are you both ready? All right, let's get started. And the next question is, let x sub n be the sum of the 100 least positive multiples of n. What is the value of the expression x sub 1 minus x sub 2? Edward. Negative 5050. That is the correct answer. Nice job, Edward. All right, and the next question is, the seven dwarves are sitting in a row with seven seats. Roger. 240. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. If Happy insists on sitting next to Grumpy to cheer him up, in how many possible ways can the dwarves be seated? One, four, four, zero. That is the correct answer, and as, as a reminder. <laughs> all right, that was the correct answer, but as a reminder, let me call on you before you say it, all right? Okay. After you buzz in. All right. All right, and the next question is, in the figure shown, square A, C, D, E has side length 20 centimeters. And the ratio of the area of triangle, Roger. 16. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The ratio of the area of triangle B, C, D to that of quadrilateral A, B, D, E is one to four. How many centimeters long is segment A, B? 12. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Three to zero, Edward takes the round. All right, let's welcome to the stage our next round. Let's have Siebert Mao and Jason Lee come to the stage. All right, Siebert, let's start with you. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what grade you're in and where you go to school. Um, I'm in eighth grade and I go to Redwood Middle School. All right. Now, for the character you think is most like you, you picked Garfield. Is it that you really love lasagna or you really hate Mondays? Because I like to eat a lot. <laughs> Don't we all? I'm guessing today's Monday would also be an exception to that rule, even for Garfield. All right, go ahead and try your buzzer. All right, Jason, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I'm a seventh grader from Bam Home School. All right. Now, not only are you a talented mathematician, but you also enjoy composing music. Yeah. Do you think your studies in math have made you a better composer and vice versa? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think the two are really intertwined. So. Yeah, it's the same part of the brain. Well, hopefully you'll get a Grammy someday like our Raytheon engineer. <laughs> All right, go ahead and try your buzzer. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yes. All right. And the next question is, TJ has five stacks of cash containing $10, $20, $40, $80, and $160. For each stack, Jason. One half. One, louder, please. One half. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. For, let's see. TJ flips a fair coin, taking the cash if the coin lands heads up and leaving the cash behind if the coin lands tails up. What is the probability that TJ will take at least $200? Express your answer as a common fraction. Time's up. Is that in? I'm sorry, time expired. Close one. The answer was 3 eighths. Did you have that one? Yeah. <laughs> All right, score is zero to zero going into the next question. And the next question is, it's Siebert. 34. That is the correct answer. Holy <laughs> All right, score is 
score is 1-0 Seabird. And the next question is, suppose A, B, C, E, and Z are positive integers, and A, B, C, Seabird. One. That is the incorrect answer. A, B, C equals E, Z equals one, two, three. What is the greatest possible absolute difference between A plus B plus C and E plus Z? Jason. 81. That is the correct answer. We're all tied up, one to one. All right, and the next question is, in pentagon P, Q, R, S, T, shown here, angles P, R, and T each measure 90 degrees, and angle S measures 120 degrees. If PQ equals RS equals ST, and PT, Jason? 64 plus 8 and 18. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. PT equals 8 inches. What is the area of pentagon PQRST in square inches? Seabird. 40 root 3. That is the correct answer. 2 1 Seabird. All right, and the next question is How many positive integer divisors? Does 700 and, Jason. 12. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Does 777,777 have? Seabird. 48. That is the correct answer. And Seabird takes the round. All right, I'd like to welcome to the stage our next set of competitors, Adam G and Selena G. <laughs> All right, Adam, we'll start with you. Why don't you introduce yourself, tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. Hi, I'm Adam G. I go to Jonas Clark Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. All right. Now, uh, I noticed that you and your opponent both have the same last name. <laughs> and you're both from the same state. Do the two of you happen to know each other? No. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a coincidence. Total coincidence. Well, it's great to have you both here. And let's take a moment to uh, wish your parents luck because they probably need it the most. Now, one interesting thing you told us about yourself is that you collect fruit stickers. Does okay. that mean stickers that come on fruit or stickers in the shape of fruit? Like stickers that come on the fruit. Like that come on the fruit? Yeah. Well, then today is your lucky day because I happen to have a snack <laughs> that has a sticker on it, and I thought maybe <laughs> we could add this to your collection. Would you, you want it? <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and test your buzzer out for us? Selena. Hi, Selena. Hi. I don't know if you're aware of this, but I actually know your brother. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I imagine we already know where you go to school, but why don't you go ahead and tell us what grade you're in? Um, I'm in seventh grade. All right. Now, uh, we asked if you could have lunch with any actor or actress, who would you pick? Can you tell us who you picked and why? I forgot who I picked. <laughs> It was a while ago. I'll remind you, you said Emma Watson, which is a great answer. Do you remember why you picked her? No. <laughs> well, you said 
thought it was for her work with gender equality. And you know what? I think that if she was here today, she would be really proud of you for holding your own on a stage with all these guys. All right, why don't you go ahead and test your buzzer? All right, are you guys ready? Are your parents ready? <laughs> All right, and the next question is, segment AB has endpoints at minus two, minus six, and B at six, Y. Adam. Negative 12. That is the correct answer, one zero, Adam. And the next question is, four cards are marked with the letters B, A, B, Selena. One six. That is the correct answer. And it's all tied up. And the next question is, in the figure shown below, both P, Q, R, S, and A, B, C, D are squares. Selena. One eighth. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The lengths P, A, and R, B are integers, and the area of A, B, C, D is 85 units squared. What is the greatest possible value of the ratio of the area of triangle A, Q, B to the area of square A, B, C, D? Express your answer as a common fraction. Adam. 14 over 85. I'm sorry, that's not correct either. The answer is 21 over 85, close. We are all tied up at one still. And the next question is, the sum of a certain positive integer and 23 is less than the difference of six times the number and 12. The absolute difference of nine times the same number and 54 is less than the sum of twice the number and nine. What is the number? Selena. 19. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Adam. Time. Eight. That is the correct answer. And it is two to one. All right. And the next question is Apurva flips six nickels and three dimes. Selena. 30. That is the correct answer. Oh. And now we enter the sudden victory procedure for this sibling battle. As a reminder, the next correct answer wins the round. And the next question is, suppose Selena. 460. Holy moly, that's correct. This is the end of our first round matchups. The winners from these first four matchups will now compete against the top four seeds who had a bye in the previous round. The rules for the quarterfinals will remain the same. So here we go. 
The first pair of students to compete will be Oren Wang and Varun Gotti. Head to the stage. All right, Oren. Let's go ahead and have you introduce yourself. Tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to Milburn Middle School and I'm in eighth grade. All right. Now, not only are you exceptional at math, but you're also a record holder in a game that I expect a lot of our parents and our coaches have played at some point in their lives. Can you tell us what that game is and what your record is? The game is Minesweeper. And I have the record for the fastest time in the country at intermediate difficulty. What is that? What is that? Va what is it? Is it intermediate like is like... No, I mean, is uh, there like, you did it in less than 30 seconds? Yeah, I did it in like 8.17 oh, seconds. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that means you're good under pressure. All right, why don't you go ahead and try your buzzer? All right, and Varun, go ahead and try your buzzer again. Get your fingers warmed up. Good. All right, are you guys ready? Yes. All right. And the next question is, what is the sum of all two-digit positive integers that contain the digit five at least once? Oren. 945. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Maroon. 985. That is the correct answer. One zero Maroon. All right, and the next question is, if AB equals 2,520, and BC equals 1,620, and AC equals 2,016, and C is a perfect square, what is the greatest possible value of the square root of C? Oren. 36. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I'm sorry, after the buzzer, the answer there was six. I think you just didn't take the square root yet. Painful. The score stays 1-0. All right, and the next question is, Consecutive positive integers M and N exist, such that M squared, Oren. 1,011. I'm sorry, oh, no. that's incorrect. Such that M squared plus 2023 equals N squared. What is the value of N? Varun. 1,012. That is the correct answer. 2, 1, Varun. 2, 0, Varun. All right, and the next question is, what is the sum of the 100 Oren? 15050. Zero, zero. That is the correct answer, two to one. And the next question is, Lee chooses three points at random on the perimeter of a square. Between every pair of chosen points, she draws a line segment. What is the probability, Oren? 15 over 16. That is the correct answer. We're all tied up. All right, we enter sudden victory. As a reminder, this means the next correct answer takes the round. 
And the next question is, if AX cubed plus BX squared, Oren. Zero. That is the correct oh. answer. Oren with the comeback. All right, I'd like to welcome our next round to the stage. Let's have Liam Reddy and Edward Chen. All right, welcome back, Liam. It's nice to see you. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what grade you're in and where you go to school. Um, I'm Liam, I'm in eighth grade, and I go to Davidson Academy online. All right, now it takes a lot of talent and hard work, not only to make it to nationals multiple years, which you've done now, but then to also make it to the countdown round multiple years. Now, beyond all that, there's something else that makes your return this year even more impressive. Can you tell everyone what makes your participation this year a little bit different from last year? <laughs> what interesting thing? <laughs> did you move anywhere? I did. I moved to Nevada from Utah. Holy moly, yeah. so he's represented two states at the national competition. Very impressive. All right, you wanna go ahead and test out your buzzer? Excellent. And Edward, get your fingers warmed up, test out yours again. Perfect. All right, are you guys ready? I assume yes. <laughs> and the next question is, what is the volume in cubic units of the three-dimensional solid formed when the figure shown is rotated, Liam? 25 pi. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The 27 Edward. pi. That is the correct answer, <laughs> one zero Edward. All right, Edward, as a reminder, you gotta wait till you hear your name. All right, I'm gonna call your name. And the next question is, a circle intersects the points P at 12.5, Q at 18.5, and R, Edward. 25.5. That is the correct answer. Two zero, Edward. And the next question is, there is one prime number P that can be expressed as P equal, Liam. I'm sorry. Oh, P equals N squared plus four N minus five, where N is a positive integer. What is the value of P? Seven. That is the correct answer, and Edward takes the round. All right, I want to welcome our next matchup to the stage. Can we have Channing Yong and Siebert Mao come up to the stage, please? Channing, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us what grade you're in and where you go to school. Well, hi, I'm Channing, I'm in seventh grade and I go to Davidson Academy Online. All right. Um, now, you mentioned to us that one movie you really like is Top Gun Maverick. I am also a fan because, as Tracy mentioned, the FA-18 Hornets they fly carry some amazing technology that we created at Raytheon Technologies. So maybe we can work on finding someone who could pull some strings and get you a joyride. Does that sound like something you'd be interested in? Yeah. <laughs> You're very brave. All right. 
right, Channing, go ahead and test your buzzer out for me. Good, and Siebert, go ahead, warm up your fingers. You got it. All right, are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, and the next question is, a circle graph represents Siebert. Six and two thirds. That's time, I'm sorry. A circle graph represents a distribution of data. If a sector of the circle graph has a central angle of 20 degrees, what percent of the data is represented by this sector? Express your answer as a mixed number. Channing. Five and five nines. That is the correct answer. One zero Channing. And the next question is, what is the greatest number of integers that can be selected from the set one, two, three, and so on through 100, such that no selected integer divides any of Siebert? 25. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Divides any of the other selected integers. Channing. Time on 27. I'm sorry, that was incorrect. The correct answer there was 50. We're looking for 50. The score remains 1-0 Channing. And the next question is, in the figure shown, a particle starts at the point marked A and begins moving to the left. When the particle encounters a juncture, it randomly travels along one of the forks, not backtracking along the path it has already traveled. The particle stops, Channing. One eighth. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. <clears throat> the particle stops when it arrives at a point through which it has already traveled. What is the probability that the particle returns to its starting point A? Express your answer as a common fraction. Siebert. Seven over eight. I'm sorry, that's also incorrect. Another tough one. The answer is two over nine. And the score remains one zero. And the next question is, Anders has two favorite numbers, X and Y, whose sum, Channing. One third. That is the correct answer. 2-0. And the winner of the round is Shannon Yang. All right, and let's get our final round for this for this section to the stage. We have Ashvin Sinha and Selena G. Ashvin, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us what grade you're in and where you go to school. Uh, I'm in eighth grade and I go to Fairview Middle School. All right. I like that you all check behind you to make sure that you're going to say the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> now, you said the actor you most like to have lunch with is Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Since you're presumably an expert on both Leo and geometry, I have an important question that's been bothering me for a long time. Was there actually room for Jack on the door at the end of Titanic? I don't know. I forgot that movie. <laughs> well, I won't tell Leo that you forgot him. Go ahead and try your buzzer out. All right, 
And Selena, warm up your fingers. Great. Are you guys both ready? All right, let's get started. And the next question is, the greatest common divisor of positive numbers A and B is one. How many such ordered pairs A, B, Selena? 128. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. How many such ordered pairs A, B exist for which A times B equals 17 factorial times 18 factorial times 19 factorial? Ashvin. 256. That is the correct answer. One zero Ashvin. And the next question is, a committee of five people is to be chosen from a group made up of six sixth graders and seven seventh graders. How many such committees, Ashvin? Uh, 27. That is the correct answer, two zero Ashvin. And the next question is, what is the exponent of Q when the expression, the quantity, 3P to the fourth, Q to the minus two, Ashvin? Nine. That is the correct answer. Ashvin takes the round, congratulations. We have now reached the semifinals with only four students remaining with a chance to become the national champion. Now before we find out who the national champion will be, we want to give each of the countdown round participants their moment to be recognized for the incredible accomplishments yesterday and today. Tracy and Bindu will help present trophies to these amazing competitors and plaques to their coaches. All right, please join me in congratulating our first round, countdown round participants. Adam G and his coach, Josh Frost. Next up, we have Jason Lee and his coach, Eric Krepsek. Next up, we have Roger Zen and his coach, Andrea Smith. And finally, we have Alex Sun 
and his coach, Andrea Smith, again. Okay, and now join me in congratulating our countdown round quarter finalists, beginning with Selena G and her coach, Josh Faust again. Siebert Mao and his coach, PJ Yim. Liam Reddy and his coach Darren Ripley. And finally, Varun Gotti and his coach, Sema Juzi. And then there were four. For the rest of the competition, our rules will change slightly. From this point on, to win a round, our mathletes will have to answer four questions correctly. So, on to our first matchup of the semifinals. Would Oren Wang and Edward Chen please make their way to the stage? Are you guys excited? You look very excited. <laughs> Oren, let's have you try your buzzer. All right, and Edward? Excellent. Are you ready? All right. And the next question is, 
Five chairs and one wobbly stool are arranged around a circular table. Two parents and their four children are to be seated at this table so that the parents are not sitting next to each other. How many such seating arrangements exist? Edward. 120. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I'm sorry, that was time. And the correct answer there was 432 arrangements. And the next question is, what is the median of the set of all five digit numbers whose digits Edward. Five, 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 five. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. What is the median of the set of all five digit numbers whose digits are even? Oren. Five, four, 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 four. That is the correct answer. One, zero. All right. And the next question is, what is the least positive integer? Edward. One. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. What is the least positive integer n? for which 20 raised to the 23 power divides 10 raised to the n. Orin. That is the correct answer. Two zero, Orin. As a reminder, wait until after I say your name to give your answer. And the next question is, a rectangle has diagonal length three root six centimeters, and one side is three centimeters longer than another side. What is the perimeter of the rectangle in centimeters? Express your answer in simplest radical form. Oren. Six root 11. That is the correct answer. Three zero Oren. And the next question is, if the quantity 13 squared plus one times the quantity 14 squared plus one equals n squared plus one, and n is greater than zero, what is the value of n? Edward. 27. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Oren. 127. I'm sorry, that was incorrect. The answer was 183. <laughs> Tough one.
Okay, and the next question is, the price of a certain book is X dollars. Edward. 100 to 49. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. One day, its price is increased by 30%. The next day, its price is decreased by 30%. Its new price is Y dollars. What is the ratio of X? Orin. 100 over 91. That is correct. <laughs> and that is the end of the match. Orin takes it. All right, let's bring our next round to the table. Let's have Ashvin Sinha and Channing Yong come to the table. All right, are you guys excited? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a big moment. It's a big moment. All right, Ashvin, let's have you try out your buzzer. Great, and Channing? Okay, are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the next question is, an equilateral triangle and a square have equal perimeters. Ashvin. Nine over 16. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. What is the ratio of the area of the square to the area of the triangle? Express your answer as a common fraction in simplest radical form. Channing. Three root three over four. That is correct. And it is one zero Channing. And the next question is, for a reduced fraction, P over Q, the denumerator is defined to be the value of P times Q. How many different common fractions, Channing? 16. That is the correct answer. Two zero Channing. And the next question is, Four is what po Channing? One third. That is the correct answer. Three zero Channing. And the next question is Ashvin. Oops. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's time. If R and S are positive integers whose sum is less than nine, how many different values are possible for the product of R times S? I'm sorry, that was after time. The correct answer there was 13. <laughs> All right, and the next question is, the arithmetic mean of five numbers, Channing? 193. That is the correct answer. 4 0 Channing. Congratulations. All right, we are now of the competition. You guys did it!
winner of this round will be the 2023 national champion. The two students who will be competing for this honor are Oren Wang and Channing Yang. All right, let's test those buzzers one more time. Oren, you start. <laughs> Great. And Channing. Okay. You guys look ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. And the next question is, in this five by five square grid, three squares have been colored gray so that each gray square borders at least one other gray square along a side, including this example. How many colorings with three such adjacent squares, Orin? 94. That is the correct answer. Point to Orin. All right, and the next question is, in the figure shown, angle Channing. Three to five. That is the correct answer. We're all tied up. All right. And the next question is, consider the set of positive integers that are divisors of 1,200. What is the probability that for a randomly selected number n, Oren? 583 over 600. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. What is the probability that for a randomly selected number n from this set, it is true that if n is even, then n is not a perfect square? Express your answer as a common fraction. Channing. Five, six. I'm sorry, that's also incorrect. The correct answer here was 13 to 15, and it stays all tied up. All right, and the next question is, at Pop's Cycle Shop, Pop sells unicycles, bicycles, and tricycles. The unicycles have one wheel, the bicycles have two wheels, and the tricycles, Channing. One. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The tricycles have three wheels. Every cycle has two pedals. One day, Pop looked around the cycle shop. He counted 54 pedals and 57 wheels. What is the greatest possible number of tricycles in the shop? Oren. 15. That is the correct, that is the correct answer. <laughs> Two, one, Oren. Okay, and the next question is, when Jesse arranges all of his pennies in rows of seven, he has three pennies left over. When he arranges the same set of pennies in rows 11, he has five left over. And when he arranges the pennies in rows of 13, he has six left over. What is the fewest number of pennies Jesse could have? Oren. 500. That is the correct answer. Three to one, Oren.
Okay. And the next question is, Sage has 15 identical berries to give to her four birds, one of which is smaller than the rest. She can only give them whole berries. She wants to make sure each bird, Channing. 84. That is the correct answer. <laughs> Three, two, Orin. And the next question is, a cargo ship loses a large shipment of shoes. Some of the shoes wash ashore on an island. If three-fourths Channing. I'm sorry, that's time. If three-fourths of the left shoes that wash ashore can be matched with two-thirds of the right shoes that wash ashore, what fraction of the shoes that wash ashore can be matched? Express your answer as a common fraction. Oren. 16 over 17. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. It's 3 to Oren. The pressure builds. The next question is, Don has three quarters, one dime, two nickels, and three pennies. For what fraction of the integer values in cents from one to 95 inclusive does Don have an exact change equivalent? Orin. Three fifths. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Express your answer as a common fraction. Channing. Um, 98. I'm sorry, that was time. The correct answer there was four fifths. So close. <laughs> All right. And the next question is. Earl has a bag containing 50 jelly beans of five colors. Of the jelly beans in the bag, 10% are green, 20% are black, and 30% are red. There is a one to four ratio of blue to orange jelly beans. Earl chooses 30 jelly beans from the bag. Orin. Three. I'm sorry. What is the fewest number of distinct colors he could have drawn? Channing. Two. That is the correct answer. <laughs> this is a tight match. All right, the next correct answer takes the championship. Are you guys ready? Yes. All right. And the question is, Erica cuts one pound of fudge into pieces to share with her friends. She divides the fudge into seven small Channing. Three over 16? That is the correct answer! <laughs> Channing Yong, you are the 2023 Raytheon Technology Math Counts National Champion.
Okay, now we have Tracy Gray and Dr. Bindu Nair back to the stage to present trophies to our top mathletes. Please give a loud round of applause for our top four students in the 2023 National Countdown Round. Our two Countdown Round semifinalists each of whom will receive a $3,000 college scholarship are Ashvin Sinha with coach Pushpa Kurian. and Edward Chen with coach Carmen Hamachek. Our countdown round runner-up, who will receive a $7,500 college scholarship, is Oren Wang with Coach Mary Beth Gackis. and this year's Math Counts National Champion, and the recipient of the $20,000 Donald G. Weinert College Scholarship is Channing Yong with Coach Andrea Smith. Congratulations to all 224 of our mathletes. Give yourselves a round of applause. You all did great.